Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to review this blog post which has gone viral on Hacker News and on Reddit. And this rightly concerns and rightly brings a few concerns which are developing with React as React is getting more and more developed and more and more mature in the ecosystem. So let's take a look at all the concerns in this article and I would want to get my viewpoints and my opinions as well. I would want to share them with you guys and want you to let me know what you think about it. And let's discuss that in the comments. So let's start with this blog post. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So it's a nicely written blog post almost in a form of a story where someone, some developer is trying to convince React that, hey, you were beautiful and awesome before, but it's not working out right now, but I still have to stay with you because of the commitment. So it's laid down in a form of story, which is nice. But yeah, let's, let's start with the very first part of the blog post, which goes into the fact that React was the first framework out of all the AngularJS and everything, which brought a spark in developers, right? It was something new, something interesting to see. However, as the time progresses and as we have new frameworks one of the first concerns which this blog post brings up is that the syntax or you know let's say even if for creating controlled and uncontrolled inputs is super verbose in react so you see this is this is this code is fairly straightforward to understand you have two state variables you have change events for two things and then you have a jsx template which then fires appropriate event handlers and then shows you the results as well. Now, the author also compares this to Svelte, for example. This is the amount of code which Svelte needs in order to provide the same functionality which React is doing in this much amount of code. Now, this is the first point, uh, is something which I don't agree with, with this blog post at all because this right here is the compiler magic, right? This is also something which we have talked about in a la in one of the videos where I discussed Svelte and React and people took it in the wrong way, but I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but I'm just saying that this is compiler magic, right? Bind value does not exist as a attribute or anything on HTML, right? These things, for example, all of this is done by the underlying Svelte compiler, right? Over here, if you take a look inside React, this is all JavaScript. React sure is working on a compiler, but it does not has a compiler just yet. So you see all of this which you're writing is actual JavaScript. So the value is set to whatever number or whatever string you specify here. And on change, the actual event is called, which then allows you to do or run any, any sort of function. So me personally, I don't feel this is like a bad approach or even, you know, if it is a little verbose, that is fine because that's that gives me clarity on what's happening. Sure, you can get similar clarity if you bind to instead of value, if you bind to on change or on input events, that is, you know, Swell will give you the similar experience like React. But you have to understand like uh, abstractions like these usually require just to use proxies, for example, view three uses proxies to handle, you know, any and every sort of changes to objects. React, on the other hand, uses explicit getters and setters, which are like variables, the native value and the setter is actually a function which renders the UI component again. So I personally don't agree with this notion that Svelte is better in this case. Svelte is just not verbose or Svelte is consisting of compiler magic, right? And yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I don't think that is a problem at all because this keeps things a little bit more cleaner and easier to see what exactly is happening. Let's take a look at second issue, which is highlighted that context right now, re-render the whole component if something changes. And to overcome this, usually the deal is to split the context itself, right? So instead of using one single context for storing every sort of global data, you just split context into different providers so as to not re-render, let's say if something in admin router changed, you don't want to re-render all the whole the whole tree of the react and again i mean this is something which is i mean the second part of this is actually true i agree with the problem that react is actually very sensitive in terms of rendering or re-rendering things because you usually have to use use memo or use callback even in functions and things if you don't want react to re-render and this is a problem this is a problem with react that react actually requires you even with functions and even with simple things require you to memoize them in order to not re-render them this is something which react actually is addressing if you remember i made a video last year titled 
is Facebook creating a React compiler? It was around December last year. And obviously it's still not out. The compiler is not out, but React and Facebook and Meta team is actually working on a compiler for React, which can memoize or which can introduce these dependencies, which we talked about automatically in your code. Right. So you don't have to necessarily write memoization or you don't have to necessarily write dependencies. React would automatically handle that. But for that, React needs a compiler, right? Because it needs to do things on your behalf. So far, all React has done is provide you as a with a UI library and just let you write JavaScript and JSX in it. But introducing that compiler will fix these issues. So yes, I agree with this issue. This is currently an issue. Not so sure about this tree issue because I don't feel like there is a need for a lot of providers once you know or manipulating them after a certain extent but yeah i mean it, it, it is subjective i mean we also use context a lot in our code base on code dam we haven't run into management problem as such with context but again this could be something which can be solved as the author suggests that you can have a use context selector something like this uh, somewhere down the line yeah, but yeah, I mean, the bigger problem which I found here, which was mentioned is that you have to use memo or callback all the time for memoization. The next point again is valid. So in React, you know that if you want to pass the ref to the child component, that means technically if you want to, let's say, call a function inside of a child component from the parent component, the way you do that is you pass a ref or, you know, you want to access something inside of a child component through parent component, you pass a ref and that is how you do it. So you use react.forwardref for this, but of course there can be a simpler solution, you know, just passing a ref as a prop and then attaching it to it. So yeah, I mean, this is again something which is a genuine concern and I'm, I'm not sure like why, to be honest, I'm also not sure why this is strictly required but maybe there are some internal details or something i'm not sure but if it is possible then this can be addressed yes again the next issue lists down that use effect is a little cryptic which again i agree and it gets a little worse with the react 18 and concurrent apis because i mean now you have to make sure that your effects are actually proper like they don't even have i mean i don't know like the context the not context api the concurrent api requires you to have effects which do not mutate your application state even if they are run once or twice or more than that times i mean they should be like, you know, you can run them in as many orders as you want, as many times as you want. So yeah, this is this is a little bit of problem again with the thing which we talked about, dependency array. This would be fixed with the React compiler shipping whenever, I mean, it does ship because this dependencies array could be automatically computed then. Once you have the React compiler, React compiler can actually see what all variables and functions and everything you are using in this function itself, in this use effect itself. And then it can go ahead and add those dependencies depending on, you know, if you're using a function, it can also memoize that depending on if that function's dependencies are changing. So a compiler can do a lot of work for you, but yeah, it, it, it might take some time to ship. Again, I agree with all of this. I agree with all of this that you have to create this dependency hell yourself this is a problem this is something which react can fix once they roll out that compiler the other problem which is highlighted here was is with the rules of hooks and if you know if you have worked with hooks you know that hooks have to be at top level in the functional component otherwise react will scream and warn and throw all sorts of errors at you that means you cannot have an early return and then use any sort of hook right so this will create a problem with react if you try to do something like this and Personally, I have also seen, personally, I have also faced this issue where, you know, if you want to do an early return and you know that this component will never render or never ever render, you have to uh, still put all the use effects and everything at the top and then somehow try to, you know, manipulate the logic against visibility or even event listeners or subscribing. So again, this is a problem, but again, like the author mentions that rules of hooks are a con consequence of implementation detail. So they have to be in this way because the way hooks are built, they have to be executed on every render and every re-render. Valid concern, maybe the implementation could have been better. I don't know what implementation would that be but it could have been better yes so i agree with this point as well the next issue which is highlighted here is that there's a lot of outdated and you know class-based code is obviously uh, something which react also has started moving away from and it mentions that there is a lot of outdated syntax and a lot of outdated docs and packages and everything but i'm not sure like this is an actual issue with react 
than you know the community itself because things like these would obviously exist to an extent for anything which is popular so yeah i'm not sure like if i completely agree with that this this notion that you know something if the documentation if the official documentation is bad then that is the problem that is a problem but react is working on beta docs which it also says for the last two years yeah i mean it's not ready but it's pretty close and it's pretty nice to see if you try to go through this documentation it's actually really good in terms of how this is organized and how this works and looks and feels and it's still in beta so it's not an official documentation page yet but yeah it works good again an issue i don't exactly agree with i mean this points out that the author has issues with react under facebook as the organization i mean this is again something which is a little political on the side and but i don't agree with the fact that okay i mean if facebook invested money and facebook invested in the research of a ui library which is used by millions of developers today that should be their decision or that should be something which they choose to do do they want to keep it under their own organization or not because facebook developed react for themselves they made it open source they worked on it i think that should be their call but again i can disagree you can disagree with me that's completely fine so yeah i mean i don't agree with this point that this is a deal breaker or anything to use with react as long as i mean facebook does not you know really compromise developer experience or do something extremely bad with react deliberately so yeah that's pretty much it for this blog post it's a nice story formatted blog post but it lists down a few important things right which i also agree with but a bunch of things also i don't agree with so this was an interesting read for just setting the context straight on where react is in today's time and is it like actually dying or is it like something which will fade away in future my tldr or my decision for that is no it would not but yeah let's let's see how things turn out because the competition is stiff i won't say like react does not has good amount of competition now there are a lot of frameworks a lot of libraries which other developers love including swelt including view so the competition is there so react has to be on its toes the team has to be on its toes releasing new features or things which improve the developer experience i'm really looking forward to that react compiler which would require you to not or you know would not require you to work with memoization manually and would have a sudden improvement in a lot of existing apps i mean if that is backward compatible because you can just immediately add a lot of memoization to every single thing you're doing so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.